In this video, I'd like to answer a common question when evaluating def integrals using the substitution method. And the question is, when evaluating a def integral using substitution, do we need to determine new limits of integration? And the answer is it depends. If we use the antiderivative in terms of x, we do not need to determine new limits of integration. However, if we use the antiderivative in terms of u, we do need to determine new limits of integration for u. Let's look at an example and we'll show both techniques. So analyzing the integral, notice how because we have the quantity three x squared plus one raised to the second, or three x squared plus one is the inner function, we'll let u equal three x squared plus one. The next step we find differential u, or differential u is equal to the derivative of three x squared plus one with respect to x times dx, so du equals six x dx. And now let's analyze the integral. Because u is equal to three x squared plus one, we can write this part as u squared. And then notice how we're left with four x dx, and we have differential u equals six x dx. Let's focus on x dx since we can factor the four out. Notice how if we divide both sides by six here, we know that one six du is equal to x dx. Which means we can substitute one six du for x dx. Now let's write this integral in terms of u. So we'll factor out the four, and then we have the integral of, this would be u squared, and then x dx is equal to one six du, so we'll factor out the one sixth, and then we have our differential u. And now let's discuss the limits of integration. The limits of integration from zero to two are for x, so we could write down here x equals zero to x equals two to remind us these limits of integration are for x, not u. If we do this, we can find the antiderivative in terms of u, write it back in terms of x, and then evaluate using these limits of integration. The other option would be to find new limits of integration in terms of u. And let's show this below. So we have four times one-sixth times the integral, and then we have u squared du. So notice how when x is zero using our equation for u, we'd have u equals three times zero squared plus one, so u would be one, which we can use as our lower limit of integration in terms of u. And then when x is two, we'd have u equals three times two squared plus one, which is equal to 13. So we can use 13 as our upper limit of integration for u. So if we take this approach, we would use the antiderivative in terms of u to evaluate the integral. And as I mentioned before above, if we use the limit of integration in terms of x, we must use the antiderivative in terms of x to evaluate the integral. Now for the next step, we have four times one six, that's four six or two thirds. And now we find the antiderivative in terms of u, which would be u to the third divided by three. Our limits of integration in terms of x are from zero to two. Because the limits of integration are in terms of x, we'll now write the antiderivative back in terms of x. So here we'd have two thirds times one third, that's two ninths. And then u to the third in terms of x would be the quantity three x squared plus one to the third. And now we'll evaluate this. We have two ninths times the quantity when x is two, three x squared plus one will be 13, so we'd have 13 to the third. And then minus when x is zero, we'd have one to the third. Let's evaluate this on the calculator. We have two divided by nine times the quantity 13 cubed right arrow, minus one cubed. Right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter, which gives us 488. Now looking at the example below, where we have the limits of integration in terms of u, we still have four six or two thirds. We know the antiderivative in terms of u is u to the third divided by three. 
So simplifying, we can write this as two ninths times, again, we have u to the third. And because our limits of integration are in terms of u, we can evaluate the antiderivative in this form here. So we'd have two ninths times when u equals 13, we'd have 13 cubed minus when u is one, we'd have one cubed. And notice how this expression here is the same expression we had above, which we know is equal to 488. Let's go ahead and verify this on the graphing calculator. So we'll press math and then option nine. Let's first verify the integral in terms of x. So we integrate from zero to two, so zero, right arrow, two, right arrow. Our integrand function is four x times the quantity three x squared plus one, raised to the second, right arrow, and then x for dx, enter, which verifies our answer is correct. Let's also integrate in terms of u using this integral here. So we'd have two thirds, or two divided by three, and then math nine, integrating from one to 13, so one, right arrow, 13, right arrow, and then we have u to the second. So for u we press alpha five and then squared, right arrow. We enter u again for du. So alpha five and enter. And of course we get the same result. So of course whichever technique is used, the result is the same. I hope you found this comparison helpful.